Hello everyone, welcome to Low Code Bug, and it's a continuation video in integration series, right? So today, what we'll be going to see, we'll be going to see the integration, right? As we already have covered the connected system part, and we know how to create a connected system now. So now my connected system is ready, and I wanted to use that connected system to build my integration. So let's get started, and let's create a connect integration object. So this is my new button, and I'm having my integration object here. So let's create this and right now you can see I'm having three options either I can use a connected system or I can create this integration from scratch or I can duplicate the ex existing integration right so pre in previous video we have already created a connected system it means we can use that right and if I don't want to use that I can also use the second option in this second option if I choose this one then inside the integration I need to configure all the details which I have already done right so i will not use the second option i will use my first option and what i need to do now i need to select my connected system so right now my connected system is coming here let's select this one and now what my functionality is i need to get some data it means we are hitting a get request right so there are different different http requests like get put and other requests right it depends on our requirement we can use that right so right now we are hitting a get request and that's why i'm putting the name like get data so now my name is ready and according to the name i can give the description right now for testing purpose i'm not giving any description but it's best to always give the description so i'm just directly creating this So now you can see we have this integration screen and we have two panels on the left hand side panel all the configuration is coming and the right hand side panel the testing part will come right wherever we will be hitting the test request and the result will be getting at the right hand side part right so right now as you have already selected your connected system so in this option your connected system will reflect so now you can see this is the connected system which i have selected and uh, i need to give the other details because i wanted to hit this request and the method is you can see it is get right so we have multiple methods you can see get put post patch delete head options trace so there are multiple things which we can do with apis right it means uh, when like basically what a get is whenever we have to get some data from other external system then we hit the get request right it means we are getting some data from the other external system right so just an example when you when you write www.google.com then also you are putting a get request right so that is also a get request and you are getting the website in return so that is called http response so what you are doing is http request and what you are getting is http response right so these are the few things which we need to understand and this is the basic thing when we are doing any kind of uh, either we are getting some data or we are putting some data so now you can also see at the right hand side panel we have the result and this is the request which we will be making and this is the response which we will be getting right so now my base url is ready what i need to do now i need to give my relative path right what will be the end point of this url so let's get back to my free api section and you can see to complete this url i need to use this end point so let's copy this and i will paste this in my relative path so now you can see my url preview is ready and this is my final url and my method is get and this is my timeout which is 10 second so let's do one thing let's get into the result and without looking into other options let's try to hit the request by clicking on this button test request so yes my output is success you can see the result is success right and the time taken by this request is 910 millisecond and this is my http res response which i got right you can see if i go inside the http request so this is the request i made and this is the response i get right but the data you can see the data is not proper right is it is not according to the appian because appian does not understand json basically so whenever we are dealing uh, with some external system mostly we will be using json format there but right now as we have to see this data in appian and we have to show this data on some kind of ui in appian so what i need to do i need to convert this data into appian format 
so there is an automatic option in appian integration so we can use that and we can convert the json data into appian form so you can also see the note is coming if i go inside the result the result is a json response response body parsing can convert the response body to appian value so either i can click on this hyperlink or i can go inside the response and i can change this value to appian value convert json to appian value and now if i hit the test request again so now you can see it makes sense now it is coming as a dictionary and these are the parameters which i'm getting right i'm getting success i'm getting result i'm getting error connected system and binary doc 75 mb limit exit right so these are few like it's a kind of data subset we are getting from the external system and inside the result you can see the result type is http response right so if i click on this result you can see everything is inside this result only we are having a status code as 200 so in http responses we have multiple status code right for error also we have a status code like 404 400 so and 200 is basically success code so to know in the de detail about these status code you can explore later on and right now we know that 200 is success code it means my request is successful and the other options i'm having apart from the header is body so body is the place from you can see the details i'm getting inside this body right so this is a fact and i'm getting this fact and the length is 43 so this is how we can create an integration right and there are multiple things we can do inside the integration there is one more section here to add rule inputs right so we can also add a rule input and we can pass that rule input as a query parameter if that is required right it depends on your integration also so now what we will be going to do because we know how to create an integration let's save this and what we need to do we need to know that how we can use this integration because there are multiple places where we can use this like on interfaces also on any kind of expression role or in process model also by using a smart service called call integration we can use this integration so that's it for today's video and uh, we will be going to see how we can use this integration in a process model right because uh, at that point of time we need to build a proper process model with all the error checks right so let's keep it till this part only today and see you guys in next video till then bye bye thank you